On today's episode, I talk about three creative playmakers at the attacking midfielder position that could potentially be game changers for you if you're on a budget. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so today I'm going to take you through some analysis that I did on attacking midfielders that have the creative playmaker playstyle. Now we took a look at a bunch of these guys. There's two things I want to call out first. The first one is the creative playmaker style is very interesting because their job is really to float around and find space or areas where they can receive the ball and then either make a nice pass or dribble past their opponent. The way that I look at creative playmakers that I think sets them apart from any other player is you really using them to essentially beat your man or use some sort of trickery to beat multiple men or get in a position where you can pass the ball into a really dangerous situation. The second thing about the creative playmaker is they're actually really hard to predict. One of the challenges I had with this position honestly was that they don't make very predictable runs like you might see from a dummy runner or a hole player where they're running into space in a predictable way that you can repeat over and over again as you start to build an attack. This makes them a little tricky to use because you can't really predict what they're gonna do. They just kind of float around and they're there. So the way that I look at using them is really as a focal point to pass the ball to them and then let the other players where I can predict their movement, make their runs, get into space, get into position. And then I use the creative playmaker to essentially create a little bit of havoc, beat that man, and then pass the ball into that space or to that other player. So it's really important to know if you're going to use this style of player, you should be using them to essentially do the heavy lifting of getting into position where you can pass to a player that's going to be making a run. So let's take a look at the players that I found on a budget that I think can actually make a difference. I look at a budget player as someone who has under a $5 million market value that you can loan pretty easily for under $2 million and that generally have low salaries. I usually keep the maximum player age to 28 years old as anyone past that has already started to decline pretty severely. So we'll start with Barbona. Barbona is a 25 year old attacking midfielder who has no inspire skills. He comes from Argentina and he can also play left midfield or right midfield. If we go to his abilities, his ball control is pretty good at 80. He's got 81 dribbling, 78 tight possession, 80 low pass and 78 lofted pass. These are really good technical stats, really solid on the ball. And you're going to see this as a theme with creative playmakers in general and certainly the three that I've chosen. He's decent at set pieces, 77 set piece taking and 83 curl so he can be your designated corner taker or set piece taker but from a speed and acceleration perspective he's not that rapid 77 speed 74 acceleration so he's not going to beat anyone on speed he does have 75 physical contact 73 bounce which actually makes him pretty stable he can hold off most challenges and it really makes him good when he's spinning players or he's beating this man with a quick step it allows him to get past them if they're fast however they will catch up and then 77 stamina is pretty solid it means he can play for 70 minutes at a fairly high level. On his remaining stats, he's got a weak foot of three, which again is really solid, makes him very dangerous. He can shoot with either foot and pass with either foot and go either direction when he's trying to beat his man. That's very useful. And then six conditioning means for the most part, he's going to be on equal or better stats as shown here. From a skills perspective, the ones that I really care about are long range shooting, one touch pass, pinpoint crossing, and lofted pass. This is really good. It means he can shoot from outside of the box and be pretty accurate. He can also do quick one twos. You can initiate through runs. If he does get on the wing, he can whip in really nice crosses. And as you're doing low crosses or lofted passes, he's going to be on the money. So switching wings, early crosses, he's going to be pretty solid. He's got nothing on team roll, so we'll move on there. And you can see from an initial growth perspective, he's going to maintain this skill set for about three years, and then we'll see what happens. So one of the things you'll see with his play style is he's very tricky at making these shifts with his body, and he's strong enough to hold off players as he does it. He can move around very well once he's got the ball. He can take the ball from deep and he can beat a lot of guys just with body movement. And that's that combination of balance and physicality. The other thing you'll see is players are kind of rotating around him. So what that means is he's going to be in a lot of positions where he can take the ball quickly, beat one or two guys, and then lay off a three ball or take a shot. This gives you a ton of options in the offensive third and allows you to do some real damage all the way through the game. The other thing is because he's not a pace-based player, you're going to be able to use him to do a lot of these moves 
moves up until about that 70th minute where he starts to run out of stamina. And if you really need more from him, you can put a counter target style on him through the tactics and he'll probably last the whole game with a good amount of stamina. And that works for any of the players I'm going to talk about. And really any player at the attacking midfield position. Lastly, one of the things I really liked about him is that he has this ability to take a pass, make really slight adjustments and turns, but control the ball all the way through. And then he can lay it off or shoot, but he consistently can do damage that way. All right. So the next guy I found is another Argentinian, 24 years old this time. His name's Jimenez. He's listed at the attacking midfield position, but he can also play central midfield or center forward. He's got no inspire skills and he's right footed. Now as we move through his skills, we see he's got 75 offensive awareness, 81 ball control, 84 dribbling, 84 tight possession. Really, really good on the ball. Can control it well, take it in, move around very well. He's got 78 finishing, so much more of a striking stat. He's going to be very dangerous inside the box for sure. And then he can also take those free kicks. 79 set piece taking and 80 curl. So he's a legitimate threat on set pieces and corners. He's got no speed, so you're not going to use that as part of his game, but he does have 85 kicking power. Again, making him very dangerous on set pieces and very dangerous both in and outside the box when it comes to finishing. He has 78 physical contact and 76 bounce. That's significant because it means that he can shrug off people, he can beat people, he can hold on to the ball in a lot of situations. He's not going to lose the ball a lot. This is going to be one of the most important things when it comes to how you use this player. He's going to be someone that you want to hold on to the ball until there's an opportunity to pass or shoot or until somebody comes to him and he can beat them with a quick step, get past them, and then determine what your next move is going to be without getting bullied. As we move through his other stats, he's got a week for the three, which again is really solid, gives him the ability to pass and shoot with either foot or to go either direction when it comes to beating your man. And five conditioning will mean that the majority of the time he's going to be on good form. As we get to player skills, here's where you see a lot of value from this player. He's got mid-range curler, which means he can curl the ball from long range with high accuracy. He's got knuckle shot and dipping shot, which give you a lot of options when you're trying to strike the ball. He's got one time shot as well, which allows you to play in balls to him and he can strike it cleanly and accurately on the first time. He's also got one touch passing, which means you can play great one twos and tiki taka football. He's also got through passing and weighted pass, which means he's highly accurate when it comes to threading the needle on through passes and direct passes that are on the ground. Really great skills for this guy. He's got nothing on team roll. So we'll move on there. And you can see that you're actually going to get some value out of this guy. He's got a little bit of a growth curve. He can absolutely gain another couple points. So he's only going to get better over the next three years. Really solid. So what you'll notice about Jimenez is he's very good at just kind of moving around the field. He doesn't do it quickly, but he's got a lot of weight to the way that he dribbles. You get a lot of value by having him on the ball. And it's very sure and steady value. You're going to have someone who can receive the ball, who can move very well with it. He's not going to have a lot of speed, but he allow other players to move around him. And he's more of a passing player or a stationary shooter. So you're not going to get a lot of really good burst throughs. What you are going to get is a lot of him picking up the ball in midfield, moving into good positions, and getting an opportunity to either strike or lay the ball off in a dangerous position. He also gets free a lot right in the middle of the field. You'll see a lot of instances where he'll pick up the ball right in the middle of the field and be able to lay it off or shoot without giving the ball up. Just really, really solid. There's not much other than that that I can really talk about. He's just really solid, really good on the ball. And if you need a player who can pass and shoot, but you don't need a lot of speed, He's a really, really good option at the creative playmaker position from an attacking midfielder standpoint. So the last of the three is a guy called Cardona. He's a Colombian left winger who can also play attacking midfield and right midfield. He's 20 years old, so the oldest of all of the ones that we've looked at so far. And he does have inspire skill. One star in low pass, one star in lofted pass. So we're starting out pretty well. He's also a right footed player. As we move into abilities, you'll see he's got a lot of good stuff here. 76 offensive awareness, 81 ball control, 77 dribbling, 80 tight possession, 80 low pass, 81 lofted pass. 77 finishing. You can see across the board, he's a really solid technical player. If you want someone who's going to feel really good on the ball, this guy's great. Add that to the fact that he's got 85 set piece taking and 86 curl means that he's really dangerous when it comes to set pieces. Free kicks, corners, he's the man that you're going to want to take him. He's also got 85 kicking power, which gives him an ability to rocket it into the net. Where it gets a little disappointing is although he's got 81 physical contact, which is really, really solid, allows him to shrug off challenges. He's only got 70 balance and 71 stamina. It'd be nice to have at least five more points in both of these but for a low level player unfortunately you have to make a trade-off somewhere this also means that as you get later into the game he's going to struggle unless you've put a counter target assignment through your tactics on him and then he'll last the whole game and be solid as we look at his other skills like the other two players we looked at he's got a weak foot rating of three which is really really good allows him to do a lot and go either way and with that five conditioning again means you're going to get pretty good form out of him now he's the biggest of all the players that we've taken a look at and he's got a real stocky feel on the pitch which i think benefits him 
him a lot. As we move into skills, again, this guy is stacked. We'll start off with Rising Shot, allows him to strike really long balls, keep them accurate, and beat the keeper in a kind of a Pogba style. He's got great three passing and weighted passing, which means that he can dissect a defense with his three balls. He's got pinpoint crossing, which means that if he gets to the wing, you can put in really accurate crosses. That mixed with low lofted pass allows you to do great over the top balls because if you're weighted passing and you're through passing and great crossing due to that low lofted pass skill. He's also a penalty specialist, which I think is good. It means that if you get a penalty, he can put it away. So really solid skills for Cardona. As we move into team role, he's the first player that actually has one. He's got team player, which is good, not great, but you're getting something for free, which is awesome. And then as you start to look at his development sheet, this is where it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. You're going to get this player at this level for about two years. This is probably a guy that you want to learn for a year. And for that one year, he will give you really, really good value at a great loan price. So a couple things you'll notice about him when he plays is he can use his physicality to actually tackle. And this is where some of the other players struggle. But then once he gets the ball, he's just really solid and stable on it. And you'll see that will translate into a couple things. It will translate in him being able to beat his man, but it will also translate into him getting fouled a lot because he's got that physicality. He's hard to bring down. You'll also see a great example of his free kick taking. He's got a rocket on his foot for someone at this price point. And he's great at playing these little one-twos that allow him and his teammates to get into some really dangerous space. And he can kind of turn and spin his man using that physicality. So very, very useful as a player to pass the ball to, to get you out of some tricky situations. His runs are actually decent for a creative playmaker, which I was fairly impressed with, but he will usually start from deep. So he'll usually sit a little deeper and give you someone to fall back to or pass back to. I think one of my favorite things about this guy is that he's a genuine threat no matter where he is on the field. If he goes to the wing, you have to respect it and defend it. If he's central, you have to send a defender to try and stop him or chase him down because he'll kill you with three rolls or long shots. And if he's deep, he can stay relevant and actually add some ability to try and win the ball back. Out of all of the players that I took a look at, he was probably my favorite. If I was going to pick one, he would be the one that I would pick. Again, he's a short-term solution. He's only going to be good for about a year or two, but that year he will deliver some really good value if this is the type of player that you're looking for. Creative playmakers are not for everyone. They have a very specific playing style and way of moving around the pitch, but if you can get the ball to their feet, they can be magical. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You would only need one of these guys. Don't go off and buy all three of them. You only ever need one of these guys at a time because of their style of play, but try one of them out and see what you think. All right, thanks guys. Hey guys, I'm new to YouTube, so if you like the content, please give me a like. If you like the topics, please subscribe and always leave a comment if you can. Thanks guys.